God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I had a quick note I want to share with you three very important things I'm encouraging everyone to do. The first one is to fill out the census. The census tracks dollars to our communities. And we need that money in our communities, not the government trying to track us and track who we are, but so that those dollars can track where we are. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is for those of us in Michigan, uh, you receive a voter's absentee ballot application. And so for us Michigan voters, we want you to fill out that absentee ballot application so that you can vote absentee. It gives you the convenience of voting in your home. You can take it in, drop it off at your convenience or mail it in. The third thing is make sure you vote. We are, it is necessary, it's very important that we vote. Uh, this is a very uh, tense time, it's a life changing time, and our decisions affect our future and the future of our uh, loved ones and our children. So please make sure you get out and vote. So remember, fill out the census, uh, fill out your application for absentee ballot so that when it's time, time to vote, there won't be issue with the weather or, or some stay at home order, doesn't matter. You'll be able to do it from the comfort of your home and vote. Get out and vote. God bless you. Remember, love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on and thank the Lord. 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 Good morning. Good morning, saints of the Most High God. Truly, I am Minister Lightfoot on this morning. And we want to thank the Lord for his goodness and his grace. Because my soul say, yes, Lord. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we approach your throne, we come with a humble heart and a humble spirit. Asking you to forgive us. Forgive us anything we said or did that's not pleasing in your sight. Blot out our iniquities and wash us in the blood. Lord, my soul say yes. My soul say yes to your will, yes to your ways. Father, in the name of Jesus, go to that hospital room. Go to that nursing home. Lord, touch that afflicted saint that's going through. Touch our loved ones that's going through right now in this pandemic. 
Lord, touch, touch America, touch the world. Lord, if we ever needed the Lord, we sure do need you now. Lord, go to the White House. Look on our military soldiers, Lord. Protect and keep them out of harm's way. Lord, bless, bless the people of God every way. Lord, touch that recovery. Touch, touch the recovery, Lord, from the north, the south, east, and west. Lord, touch recovery, recovery. Lord, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're calling on that great and mighty anointed name, Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. We're reading the 125th, uh, 121st number of Psalms. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill, from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon right, thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's say amen. Amen. Let's the praise team come forward. Let's pray for the... Bless the praise team. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. And I'm growing more and more each day. You see, there were many that started out with me. But now they've gone astray. But I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his hand. You see, when I was young, I gave God my hand and I told him to lead the way. Though the going has been tough and the days have been mighty rough, but still I ain't going nowhere. I'm out here to stay. Though I've been talked about and oh, I've been criticized, I had to wipe many tears from my eyes, but I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his hands, yes, oh, and I'm And I'm still 
put those hands together. Is God in control? Come on, put those hands together. As we going through, is he in control? He's in control. He's in control. Can everybody please stand right now as our pastor is coming to the room? I'm going to decrease so that the word of God may increase. Let's say amen for Elder Nolan on today. Well, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And I'm so glad the scripture declares I don't have to do it by myself. Because those of you that are here, those of you that are on Facebook Live, those that are listening on the conference call, the Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on and let's lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. Now, we just said he's in control. Come on and lift him up. Is he in control of your hands? Hallelujah. Is he in control of your mind? Is he in control of the circumstances in your life? If you know he's in control, then come on and give him a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Bless the name of the Lord. Hey, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Ah, if you're safe, you ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hey, 
Hallelujah. I can rejoice because he's in control. I can rest in him. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes, 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 yes. I came to give him a praise. I came on Facebook to shout in my living room. Hallelujah. When I picked up my phone, was looking for worship, I wasn't going to let nobody come between me and my God. That's why I got to praise him. I got to praise him. I got to praise him. Oh, because the more I praise him, there's a lifting that happens in my spirit. The more I praise him, there's a shift that comes in my mind. The more I praise him, my God. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. My God, my God. God bless you on today. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, oh God, even now. God, open up our hearts that we may receive. Open up our ears that we may hear. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted on thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture today is coming from Jude. Jude, the book of Jude. And can anybody guess what chapter in Jude? <laughs> There's only one. Amen. Just one. Everybody say Jude chapter 3. Yeah, you won't read your Bible. Uh huh. Yeah. Jude. Praise God. And I think I'm just going to read the third verse. Yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, Jude chapter 3. Excuse me, Jude verse 3. Uh huh. See that? See? See that? See what happened? Amen. Jude verse 3. And it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I want to talk to you from a subject. We're going to, we're going to stay in the series now of persevere and persevere. Uh, look at somebody say, fight for it. Fight for it, fight for it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, when we think about this Jude, Jude, uh, you know, Jude was, uh, he was the brother of Jesus. Uh, even though Jesus doesn't in, uh, introduce himself as the brother of Jesus, I just feel like teaching. I'm going to see if we can't just talk a little bit this morning. Uh, Jude, God bless all of the elders. God bless, I figure we wear our our collars today uh, because, you know, we got a new elder. You know, let him put his collar on. Praise God. You know, yeah, put your collar on. Amen. We thank God for his ordination and thank God for, amen, our, uh, yeah, this is your first Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Elder Justin Obi. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for these elders and, of course, Elder Williams and all of you, the people of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Jude was the brother of Jesus, but he, he, he introduced himself as the brother of James. James was the famous brother. James was the, uh, he was the bishop of the church in Jerusalem. James uh, was well known by the early church. Jude was not so well known. Uh, his, his name did not ring or, or res resonate uh, with those there. And so he wanted to identify himself, not so much that he was Jesus' brother trying to make himself into something wonderful, uh, but he identifies with James. And there is, you know, the commentaries and the different things that talk about the relationship. Were they the stepbrother? Were they the biological brother? Did Mary have more children? And, you know, all of those things that sometimes seem to trip us up. That's not what we're going to deal with this morning. I don't care how many brothers there was or whose brother who shot J.R. 
None of that. Jude wrote a letter. Amen. And he wrote it to a specific uh, group of people. He, he, he had endeavored to do something. And as I, as I, as I uh, went down this road, uh, I, was, I was looking for something in the scripture. And you know you can go looking uh, for something and find something else. Uh, you just got to be wise enough and, 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 and sincere enough to accept what God shows you. When you think about how familiar this scripture is to many of us to contend for the faith and, and, and the purpose of why it was written. Uh, in our moment now that we should persevere through different things, how, what is, what is Jude telling us to persevere through? And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, uh, we, we're living, of course, you know, the, the climate uh, today is raining, but the climate is the coronavirus, the, the election, social injustice, all the things that are going on in the world have become very prevalent and that we need to deal with it. But that's not what Jude is telling us to persevere through. We gotta, of course, we should persevere through our sickness, persevere through our health challenges, and, and we've got to, con to fight. Uh, to live and to exist through some of these challenges, but that's not what I found here. What could be more important? What could what could garner the attention that that Jude, even though like me, I intended to talk about something else today. And Jude, when he wrote this letter, it was his intention to give some encouragement to the saints. It was his intention to give a nice pastoral letter to 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 exhort the people and to lift up their their countenance and, and to give them some hope and you know something to smile about but then he saw something that was needful for him to address he saw something that began to happen in the early church that he said i cannot waste this opportunity and like many of us my brothers and my sisters uh, don't waste the opportunity to reach out to God when that's available don't waste the opportunity to spend time in prayer don't waste the opportunity that we have now when we're we're isolated when we're when we're sequestered when we're supposed to be shut in social distancing uh, social distancing from one another should not mean we're distant from God uh, but it, it, it gives us a time to amplify our reach for him because now we're not reaching for each other. Uh, sometimes we need to social distance from our social media. Yeah, yeah, we need to social distance from uh, the telephone. And, and yes, we must stay connected to each other, but it's more important to stay connected to God. So Jude writes this letter. He writes a letter, and, and when he starts it out, he says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James. And he says to them that are sanctified. Uh, sanctified not within yourself, but sanctified by God the Father. Sanctified. Sanctified, you know, this is a sanctified church. You know, this is a, this is a holy church. Sanctified church. Hand clapping foot stomping, tongue talking, gospel spreading, uh-huh, lying, backbiting. Uh-oh, I lost some of y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. He talks to them that are sanctified. And this word sanctified seems to trip so many of us up. Jude, the purpose of the letter is to talk about or to, to address false teachers. The purpose of the letter is to to come after the apostasy and the things that were being perpetuated in the church, which was not Jesus's original intention. And, it, and when I came across the word sanctified, I couldn't just go right past it because we have taken this word sanctified and we began to use it in the wrong way. Sanctified, my brothers and my sisters, does not mean your clothes. Sanctified does not mean uh, the way that you wear your hair. Sanctified, my God, is not in what's on your face or not on your face. Sanctified is not the color of your fingernails. Sanctified 
Uh, we're just going to talk about sanctify. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get past it, but, but I feel Facebook, I feel y'all pulling at me. Sanctified, my brothers and sisters, the word itself has nothing to do with how we look on the outside. Oh, but what does my heart look like? What is the condition of my heart towards God? How am I connected to him? The believers are the sanctified. Sanctified person is a person who has turned away from sin and set their life apart, set their life apart, set their life apart uh, to follow God. A person who is set apart unto God, sanctified means to be set apart. Uh, and no, I understand that there were there were times when we need to be distinguished in our dress. And I still believe uh, uh, there is a time and a place for that. I consider myself to be sanctified. Hey, my God. Yeah, yeah sanctified is washing your hands. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time. Y'all pulling at me. Y'all don't, y'all pulling at me. But the, per the person who is set apart unto God separated from the world and its possessions and players, pleasure. But here is the problem. When he said to be ye separate from the world, not to be separated from the world. Be separate mean not to indulge in the things that the world does, but you got to be in the world, but not of the world. How do I reconcile all of these things in the scripture and how I am supposed to be sanctified. I just want to know who you, let you know who Jude was talking to. He wasn't talking to everybody. He was talking to the folks who was sanctified. <laughs> I'm enjoying this more than you. That's all right. Uh, and so he he, he lays it out that we understand, my brothers and sisters, because if we're going to talk about false teaching, we got to talk about the false teaching of being sanctified. Uh, because you can have a long skirt and still be a whoremonger. Yeah, there's another word, but I thought I'd be nice. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you can, you, can, you, can, uh, you can wear this collar, my God, in this gold and red cord. With a cross in your left pocket. Ah, my God, and not be sanctified. Because if it went by how you dress, you would dress your way into heaven. But I'm so glad that's not how you get there. Ah, and so, and so even with a collar on, I found uh, your homonger. Yeah, I know that's tight, but it's right. And the only way, here's the thing, here's the, the paradox of church. And we, I'm just talking, you know, I'm just talking. We'll see where we end up. I'm going to talk about 15 minutes and then somebody saying and, and lead you to Christ. Uh, uh, but here's, here's the paradox of church folks. We get uncomfortable talking about things that people actually have to live with. How do we who is salt? For the world. How do we who are supposed to be the light that sitteth on a hill that shine in the darkness become so uncomfortable hiding behind this sanctified, which is really sanctimonious title and say we can't deal with stuff, but we're supposed to reach a dying world who's dying with the stuff that we refuse to deal with. How? Uh, I'm just talking to believers. I'm just letting you know who Jude was writing to. Jude was wanting to reach a group of people that he called sanctified. He identified them as believers. Uh, but we today, my brothers and my sisters, don't you turn off your Facebook channel. You stay right there. It's going to bless you. Uh huh. You stay right there. Uh -huh. And matter of fact, you need to share it. Share it with your, share it with your family. Share, 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 share it with your church going family members. Share it with them. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we, we, we get uncomfortable dealing with the fact uh, that children are still being molested. You don't want to talk about that. And they're being molested by people that go to church. 
Uh huh. But because it's so it's so sensitive, because it's so uncomfortable, because uh, it 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 makes us uneasy. Imagine how the person who's living with it feels. You don't want to talk about domestic violence. We don't want to talk about abortion. We don't want to talk about uh, uh, these, what we call the uglies in our society because we sanctify. The devil is a lie. Uh, that's, that's by definition false teaching. That's false doctrine. When we believe that, that they were, these topics are off limits. Uh, because God is the God of the Bible. He's the God of heaven and the earth. The same God that's a God on the mountain is the same God down in the valley. How do you know, preacher? Because he said he's a lily in the valley. Hey, uh, I'm just trying to identify who these sanctified folks are. You can't be sanctified and not deal with this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot be sanctified uh, in your dress and then you're an adulterer. You can't be sanctified in your dress and you're a murderer. I ain't never killed nobody yet, but you're killing somebody with your tongue every day. Uh, there's a deadly fire uh, that's in your mouth that's hard to, to contain. It's hard. It's an unruly member. Stop talking so much. Sanctified folk don't talk so much. Uh, because sanctified folks understand that every idle word God says you got to give an account for it. Sanctified, sanctified. I know this is not what you came for. I know this ain't what you dialed in for. But I think, I think Sister Joy is with me. Sister Joy, I feel a Philip Paris speech with spirit in here today. Sanctified. Yeah, sanctified. Sanctified folks understand that if I'm going to be sanctified, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not dwelling in the world's possessions, uh, but I'm dedicated to following God, uh, uh, giving all I am to him is what I'm sanctified because I've been designated a part and believers are preserved in Christ. Believers. Let's talk about, uh, not just sanctified, but sanctified believers. Mm-hmm. Believers, uh, thou will confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe and believe and believe. And we, it is so easy to say, uh, but there is something that's got to happen on the inside of you for you to be in the category of the believers. Believers don't believe and live in sin. Believers don't believe it's okay to sin. Believers don't believe that they can live for God and live for the devil. That was Sunday school. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh -huh. uh, believers are preserved in Jesus Christ. The word preserved uh, means to be kept. Uh, to be guarded and watched over. God keeps the believer, guards and watches over him. The believer is watched over by God. <laughs> There's benefits to being a believer. The believer is guided and directed by God day by day. Uh, believers, believers. See, see, you're not a believer if you believe in going your own way because Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the light. No man come unto the Father except uh, by me. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. That's fine. That's fine. I've got, I've learned how to persevere that I can talk without anybody saying amen. Oh, uh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, uh, believers are strengthened by God to walk through all the trials and temptations of life. Believers are protected from the enemies of life, even death, believers. Uh, the believer is escorted into heaven, my God, uh, quicker than the blink of an eye when the time comes for them to leave this world. There's benefits to being a believer. Believers given life, uh, both abundant and eternal life. Believers uh, is given assurance of God's presence and love through all of life. Believers, and, and the thing I was reading kept referring to true believers. I think it's only one. I, just because you put a true in front, it could be a true lie. What is that? Uh huh. You know, if, if I got to put an adjective to, to assure that you are what I say you are, then you ain't that no way. I know that ain't good. I'm sorry. That's my South Carolina raising up. Y'all forgive me. You know, it happens from time to time. Uh huh. But, but if I got to say a true believer, yeah, what is that? 
a believer is just that. Either you're a believer or you're not. We keep trying to be nice and say a true believer versus a believer. No, either you're a devil or you're not. Either you love God or you don't. Uh huh. Either I, I can't say I love God and then there's some people that really love God. What is that? Uh uh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, we get tripped up by too many words. Sanctified folk don't use so many words. Yeah. Uh, believers, believers. Uh, believers, a person who's preserved and kept by God, uh, is a person who's looked after and cared for by God. A uh, believer in Christ, uh, God keeps the person in Jesus Christ. A believer has placed his life into Jesus Christ. Uh, it's no longer I that liveth, but the Christ that liveth in me. Uh, the believer in Jesus Christ, because when, remember in, in John chapter, was it 14, 17, where Jesus prayed, he said, Father, I pray not for this, these only, these are my disciples that are here living right now, but I pray for those that are going to be watching on Facebook. See, he remembered you. Yeah, he knew it was coming. He said, I pray for them that will believe because of their word. He said that they shall be one, even as we are one, I in them and they in me. If, if we are a believer, we're in Christ Jesus. And if we're in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus in God, and God has all power, then everything's all right. Believers. Believers are called. Uh, called. What does it called mean? Believers are the call. The call. It means that believers are the persons who have responded to the call of the gospel. Uh, God calls man to accept the gospel. He tugs and pulls at the heartstring, convicts and convinces man to accept Jesus Christ as his son. But God has to respond. But man, excuse me, has to respond to the call of God. God cannot make the decision for you to be a believer. Uh, and I know you went, you went, you said, uh, well, well, Thomas said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Yeah, see, you're not reading the scripture right. Uh, Thomas said, Lord, I, I, yes, I believe, but there are some things that I can't reconcile. And I need you to help me with that. Uh-huh. And so here it is. He says, the, the believer is a person uh, excuse me. Yes, the believer is a person who has genuinely accepted the call of God. God summoned him, called him, and the believer is the one that responds. He becomes a believer. He, he believes in Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, it means uh, that you've been called to be a saint. Now, there's another word, saint. Uh, everybody's a saint now. No, you're not. You're a devil dressed up. Yeah. Yeah, see, 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 what, what we've got to, we've got to be able to recognize, and I'm going to hurry along, I'm running out of time. We've got to recognize that everybody that says, Lord, Lord, don't mean it. Everybody that puts collars on and put crosses in their pocket and put on long dresses does not mean that they've been dressed in their hearts. Uh, he talks about a circumcision, but he said you need to be circumcised in your heart. That there needs to be a cutting away in us. So I'm just trying to identify who Jude is talking to. Uh, the believers are called to a heavenly hope, called to an eternal hope, it's called to be perfected and conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 4, there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Uh, therefore, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, who? Jesus Christ, that's Hebrews 3 and 1. Philippians 3 and 4 say, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You are the called if you're believers. So here Jude, and I'm closing. <laughs> Jude uh, wanted to exhort uh, those earnestly to contend for the faith, touch somebody say, well, look at somebody say, you got to fight for it. Uh, that you contend for the faith. He explicitly, he states explicitly that he set out to write about their common salvation. But I can't deal with the thing that we have in common while ignoring the thing that has us under attack. And so many times, my God, 
So many times we're looking at something uh, because it's comfortable. We're dealing with the thing uh, because it's palatable. We're, we're focused on the thing that's going to get us likes and shares and, and get us into the right circles. Uh, but while the meantime we're ignoring the stuff that's tearing us apart. Uh, we're ignoring the thing that's destroying our families. Uh, we're ignoring the thing that's killing our children. We're ignoring the thing that's attacking our very, our very faith. Uh, so Jude makes a decision. <laughs> I'm enjoying verse 1. Lord Jesus. Look, Jude makes a decision. He said, yeah, I want to talk to you about these wonderful things. I want to talk to you about when we're going to all get back together and how it's going to be a wonderful time, how we're going to dance and we're going to shout and we're going to enjoy the Lord. I, I want to talk to you about healing and deliverance. I want to talk to you about, oh, the heaven that waits for us that believe. I want to talk to you about that there is a city uh, whose streets are paved with gold. I want to talk to you about that there's going to be a heavenly host. I want to talk to you about the fact that we've been delivered from the bondage of our sin and we've been freed from the guilt and the retribution of everything that we've ever done wrong in our life. I want to talk to you about all that Jesus when he died on the cross and he gave his life that we might have a right to say I'm sanctified I am a believer I'd like to talk to you about all those things but there is something something that's been attacking me something that's been tearing up the church something that's been creeping in uh, he said, I got to deal with this. These false teachings. Uh, false teachers. Uh, I got to believe. I want you to know right now. My brothers and my sisters. Uh, I think I'll just close it out. I want you to know right now. Uh, that even though we can't get to that today. And this will be the only letter I ever write in my life. It's more important that I share with you that you've got to contend. You've got to fight to believe. You've got to fight to believe. You've got to fight for the faith. You've got to fight for the thing that was delivered in this original state before the perversion of this world before man in his vain imaginations, before de deceivers and creepers and, and weirdos and slanderers got in the church. I need you to go back and dust off that original Bible, the one with all them pages torn off before they got into it with all this technology. The one that you was the pages all wrinkled and you still got tape on some of them where the letters of Jesus Christ is in red. You need to go back to that and fight for it. Hallelujah. Hey. Ah. Believers, uh, we got to contend for the faith uh, that was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, that he had a plan for us. But we came out of t Good evening, children. Fare thee well. I got to close now. But before I close, I got to give you one more thing. Because I was walking through this story. I found me a witness in the Old Testament. It was in the book of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, he was building a wall. Because the city's gates had fallen down. And wouldn't nobody help him. And he couldn't rest, couldn't sleep. He couldn't have peace. Knowing that the city of God, knowing that those things that are treasured, those things that are precious, laid unprotected from vandals, from scoundrels, from ruthless people. He said, I got to go and do a work. He got permission and he went to go building a wall. He went and found some folks, some folks that trusted in what he was doing, some folks that believed. See, the first thing you got to remember, don't yoke up with everybody. 
because everybody don't believe what you believe whose report will you believe ah so he had to weed out those who didn't believe like him those who began to speak against him those who would do him evil and he had to walk through him all that persecution that try and dejected him he began to build the wall and in the bible nehemiah chapter 4 and i think i'll begin at verse 16 this is what i want to leave with you now and it came to pass that from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears the shields the bows the haberguns and the rulers were behind all the house of judah but then verse 17 says and they which build it on the wall and they bear that burdens and they that bear burdens with those that had been laid in him everyone with one hand wrote in his work that means with one hand they were building with one hand they were encouraging him with one hand they was exalted with one hand they were lifting up lift him up lift the savior up with one hand they was in prayer they was in fasting they was in deliverance they was carrying saints they were giving alms they were forgiving people they were blessing those that cursed them with one hand but with the other hand they had a sword and they had a shield so while they built him they kept fighting him while they blessed him they kept fighting him and i just dropped by him jackson memorial to the church of god in christ to say good evening children i'll see you in the morning i didn't mean to keep it this long but before i go you've got to fight him for the right to believe him you've got to fight him while you pray you've got to fight him while you fast you've got to fight him while you exhort him hallelujah for with one hand him he wrought the work him and with the other hand him he held the weapon him for the believers him one with the sword him girded by his weight him and so build it him so build him but don't forget your sword him build him but don't lay down your shield him build him and fight for it him fight for the faith him that's in your family him fight for the faith him that trusted god him fight for the faith him that was delivered unto you him seeing that him we've been compassed about him with such great a cloud him, of witnesses him. let us run him, the race that's set before us him, and looking under jesus him. i'm looking him, and i'm still fighting him i'm trusting him and i'm still fighting him the devil can't have my mind him. you can't have my children him. you can't have my joy him. because this joy him, that i have him, the world didn't give it to him and the world didn't take it away huh? so i'm going to fight him i'm going to contend him i'm going to believe him i'm going to trust him i'm going to deal him with unsavory topics huh? hallelujah huh? because how can i rejoice huh? and see false teachers huh? how can i rejoice huh? and see the gates wasted huh? how can i rejoice huh? and see the walls tumbling huh? how can i rejoice huh? I can't shout over this. Um, I can't dance over this. Um, I can't clap over this. Um, but I got to fight. Um, I got to fight. Um, and I just decided um, a long time ago, um, for God I live um, and for God I die, um, my heart um, is fixed um, and my mind um, is made up. Hey! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's what you got to know. 
The devil can't stop you. He can't stop you from doing anything. He can't stop one blessing of God getting to you. But what the devil does, it gets you so frustrated. Get you so aggravated that you want to give up. So it's not that the devil defeated you, but you gave up. Uh, and I refuse to give up. Uh, I refuse to let go. But I'm going to lean forward. I decide I'm going to persevere through this. What about you? We got to persevere, persevere through false teaching. Uh, any spirit that says Jesus Christ is not coming in the flesh. Any spirit that does not say uh, that you're saved by grace. Uh, not by what you wear. Oh, Lord. You're saved by grace. Yeah. But it's the gift of God. You ain't qualified to have it no way. For when we were yet sinners, my God, when we didn't deserve it, wasn't fit to live, wasn't ready to die. Christ died for us. And anybody that tries to shortchange us of that is full of the devil. Oh, you hear me today. Uh, so I decide I'm going to fight. <laughs> hey, God. Sometimes I fight just for exercise. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to fight. Uh, yeah, I'm going to fight. And the con word contend means to strive as in an athletic event. Or to wrestle. It's not going to be a quick thing. There's no, there's no one hit punching they out. No, you got to wrestle with this thing. You got to contend, strive, struggle, fight. Because the devil ain't trying to take your house. He ain't trying to take your job. He don't care nothing about your marriage. All those things are distractions to pull you away from the faith that was once delivered unto the same. Father, we thank you now. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God. Even those that are here under the sound of my voice that may not know you, oh God, would you touch their hearts even now as we transform us into believers on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the grace to walk in your favor and your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you for it now. We thank you for it now. We thank you, God, that you're strengthening us to contend uh, past every struggle, heartache that we're contending, we're struggling, we're wrestling. Hallelujah. That just because I'm struggling doesn't mean I'm failing. Uh, God, but I thank you. Hey. I thank you that you're freeing me from what other people think. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless these that are here. Bless these under the sound of my voice. Strengthen your people even now. Uh, as you said in your word, if you believe in that heart that God is raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart, we believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, we got to confess unto salvation. Thank you, God, that we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You died and you rose again. Hallelujah. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of our iniquities. Uh, in the name of Jesus come into our hearts even now and we thank you for salvation in Jesus name amen amen God bless you my brothers and my sisters uh, as you prepare we're going to turn it over to the hands of Elder Williams and as you prepare I want you to be a blessing to ministry uh, because the devil tells us not to give amen Amen. And for those of you not saved, amen. If you're not saved, you don't have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You would pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. And I thank you for salvation now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I believe old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We thank God for your conversion today. Amen. I want to ask you to give. Man, you can give via Cash App, via Givelify. The PayPal is not working, so give via Cash App or 
or give the file. You can mail in your gift. Amen. And we believe that God's going to bless you. Jackson Memorial, we are 100% tithe paying church. Uh, so if you're a member of Jackson Memorial, you're a tither. Uh, if you're a member of Jackson Memorial, you're a tither. Amen. And we thank God for you and your giving. You're in the hands of Elder Williams at this time. Let's say hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Can everybody please stand for the dismissal? We thank the Lord for the word and the messenger on today. Lord, Father, we thank you now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen let the church say amen my story